afternoon. I would like to welcome you in today's session. And today's session is about becoming a reviewer. We'll talk about the reviewer role, how to become a reviewer, what you're supposed to be as a review to do as a reviewer. I hope the session will help you and guide you with all the needed information. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have anyone who registered for this session and you would like to share the session with, please let me know. So what we're going to discuss today is um, this session that will be giving you and providing you with a practical uh, tips and some guidance on all the aspects of the peer review. So you will see how being a reviewer can benefit your career. You will discover what is involved in shaping a review and learn some tough writing skills when you are writing a review. So the first thing you need to know is why do you review? The tips for reviewing before you review what you need to do and the response to the review request, the peer review process, and the peer review, the peer review models. The first thing we will start with is why do we review? So the, the, when you conduct a review, the reviewing establishes you and gives you the reputation as an expert in your field of research. This is first of all. So when you conduct a review, you become an expert in your field of research. It's a great way for you to enhance your academic and your professional reputation, of course. Also, when you become a reviewer and when you review, it is an opportunity for you to read the top cutting edge researches before before it has even been published so when you're reviewing it gives you an idea an ideal opportunity you for you to exercise your critical thinking skills in a very private arena you can return the favor you are very likely has published an unpublished author already, which means others have found the time to review your papers, and now you can repay the courtesy. You will be also building relationships with the journal editorial team, which is increasing your chances of being invited to join an editorial advisory or review board. When you're reviewing for an Emerald Journal, it's different because when you review for one of our journals, it will entitle you for free personal access to up to 40 Emerald Journal articles. Of course, we exclude the back files. This, is access, this access will be valid for 90 days period from when you receive your access notification. You could be recognized for your efforts each year Editors are always asked to nominate outstanding reviewers for our Literati Awards. You will get an official recognition for your contribution through Pablons. Your reviews that you're going to carry out will be linked back to your Pablons profile, which is making it easy for you to demonstrate your impact in funding and promotion application. Also, you could be recognized by uh, the publishers in your field too. Editors are always here, uh, keen to hear from researchers, and they are always ready to take the next step in their publishing career. So if you think that reviewing might be the right move for you, we'll give you some tips for reviewing. First of all, if you have a Scholar One account, you need urgently to complete the area of expertise section so that it accurately reflects your field of knowledge. 
all the editors are frequently sourcing potential reviewers and what do they do is they go the first source is scholar one and they search over scholar one using these keywords that you are going to fill so it might approach you with a request a review request for example even if you only have an author account if you are new to reviewing, the Publons Academy offers a peer review training course. It's a very important and crucial course if you want to be a good international reviewer and conduct high quality reviews. You can also look for an Emerald Journal with an aims and scope that's closely aligned to the area of your expertise. So when you do this, it will ensure that the review requests you are receiving are relevant. Once you find a journal that feels like the right fit, you can directly contact the editor. You can send them in the ma a mail. You can explain that you would like to review for the journal and include a resume that's outlining your areas of expertise uh, for them to judge if you can be a reviewer and join their team or not. Also, you can always ask a senior colleague or a senior reviewer to mentor you as you find the journal and carry out your first review. They should be able to offer you all the practical help and the advice as well as the support when needed. There is always the guidelines for any journals that you are going to review. You need to be aware with all the guidelines of this journal. So when you are reviewing any paper for this journal, you need to make sure that this paper is aligned with the required uh, criteria. So how to review a journal article? The first thing you need to know that the reviewers, they play a crucial role in the publication process. With a very wide range of responsibilities, we have developed some reviewer guidelines to support you at each stage of the process. First of all, you need to know what you need to do before you start reviewing. The first thing that you will receive an email that's inviting you to, for, to review for a journal, a case study, a book proposal, with the option to accept or decline, of course. So we'll give you some things that you need to think about before you make your decision, either you accept or refuse. So first of all, you need to check for the time. So the journal editors here, they will send you uh, and they'll be looking for reviewers that are through and very specific what does that mean it means that if you are not sure whether you have the capability and the capacity to deliver the level of quality that you can always recommend a colleague who has more free time and can sub, uh, uh, commit to uh, the reviewing that's required also if you might like to review for the journal when you are less busy, don't forget you can let the editor know and you can tell them that I'm interested, but maybe I'm just too busy this time and I would like to be approached again or I will be approaching you whenever I have more quality time to uh, review for your reputable journal. One more thing is that when you are uh, receiving the the request you can also uh, check for the best match you can also check for the best match what does that mean it means that you can check if this uh, uh, maybe the editor may be not very fam familiar with uh, the the courses or the all the scopes in your field uh, maybe he's an expert in a certain field 
So you need to check the area of expertise and uh, you are the best place to judge whether you have the expertise that's required to conduct a review in this journal or not. So don't just depend on the editor. Uh, you need to help him to match you with the right paper. So please keep your Scholar One accounts always, always up to date with all the relevant keywords and the institutional details, which will help the editor to match you with the right uh, papers and with the right content that you have the expertise at. One more thing is the deadlines. So as you know that these reviews has certain deadlines that you need to conduct it before the deadline. And I'm sure that you are researchers and you've waited a lot of time for these reviews. So it's always very important that you feel that uh, uh, if the editor is asked you to carry out a review, it's a good idea to respond confirming you've received the request even if you are unsure yet whether you will accept it or not. And the period of time allocated for the review will vary per journal from one journal to another and one editor to another. And of course, the editor here will be informing you of the time frame when they invite you. If there is any conflict of interest, you need to fully disclose any potential conflict of interest. It won't necessarily eliminate you, but it will help the editorial team to make an informed decision. For example, uh, working in the same department institution as an author, it's a conflict of interest. If you're ha having a co-written published paper with the author in the past even, it's a conflict of interest. Also, uh, if, um, what do you call it? If your professional or financial collection with a researcher or the same uh, 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 author, it's a conflict of interest. So the first thing, this is before you uh, accept or uh, uh, neglect the request. So what other things that you need to uh, check before you uh, uh, start. Also, you can accept or decline your review request from your invite email, but for journals and case studies, the manuscript or the case will be sent to you to your reviewer center on your uh, our editorial system, which of course you can access it directly from your mail. So when you're reviewing the manuscript, it's very important to know that before you start, you need to review the manuscript. You will be asked in detailed questions to encourage you to consider all the aspects of the manuscripts. So for the journals and case studies, you will complete the field on the review and score tab in the reviewer center on your Scholar One. Although the questions may vary and, and be so different depending on the journal or the publication, that uh, we have highlighted some areas for consideration. The ethics are rather important. So as a reviewer, you are not responsible for spotting ethics issues in the manuscripts, but with your knowledge and expertise, you are often best placed to spot cases of fraud, any cases of plagiarism, or any possible defamation or li libel. So if you have the reason to suspect any ethical misconduct, either deliberate or even accidental, please, please you may make sure that you let the publisher or the editor know as soon as possible, and you can find out more about the types of publishing issues you might encounter on the Research and Publication Ethics Guidelines page. Another thing that's rather important is the originality. So does the article say something new and interesting or not? It needs to be original. Does it add to the body of knowledge? 
is the research question in this research an important one or not? How does the manuscript compare to the most highly cited or downloaded papers in your field? Is there is any tool such as the Web of Science, Scopus can help you answer these questions as a reviewer? So what if the research has been covered previously? You need to forward any references and any relevant references to the editor just to make sure that they are aware of what you are conducting. The peer review process. So here you've accepted the peer review process. What happens with the peer review process? So we need to know from your perspective as a reviewer now, the cycle, how does it start? First of all, the editor will receive the manuscripts from the author or the manuscript submission center. Then he will check them for an initial desk review to check if they are matching the general outlined requirements for their uh, journal or not. And then the editor here will uh, select up to three reviewers, so you'll not be the only one who's conducting the review for this paper. And you are supposed to be selected because you are an expert in this field in the same scope as the author who wrote this paper. So you'll be conducting, uh, 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 you'll be chosen accordingly. So this is something that you need to consider. If you don't feel that you are the perfect fit for this paper, you need to inform the editor and as soon as possible. So then you will be required to conduct an initial desk review to check and give your recommendations to the editor about the paper that you are checking. If it's uh, 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 matching the requirement, if it's new, if it's original, and based on, your, the, on the recommendations that the editor will receive from you and your fellow reviewers, he will take the decision about the paper, either to accept it, reject it, or maybe put for reviewing. So if the paper is up to reviewing, it means that it will go to the peer review process or the cycle of the peer review process, and you will be receiving this paper again. Please, the common thing that we always get from the research is that the language is used by reviewers are so harsh and so mean and so demotivating. So try as much as possible. You are here to help. Try to help them. Try to be uh, supportive. Try to teach them something when you are conducting the review. What goes around comes around. So we'll keep going on this review process up till the paper you are fully happy with the content and the quality of the paper that you are reviewing and then the paper will be accepted and it will go truly to the publishing site so how to to know the details that you are reviewing for first of all first part is the manuscript layout and the format the layout and format is very important for every paper each journal's author guidelines, it will contain, it will give you instructions on the manuscript presentations, and all the authors are expected to follow these guidelines closely. If they don't, and the editor hasn't mentioned the omission in the inv invitation to review, you should flag the issue out with the editor or highlight it in review re your review report. Even though the, the, the editor maybe did not flag it, even though the content may be good, but you need to flag it out. If the paper is particularly original or interesting, the editor may wait until they have decided to accept it before asking the author to reformat. The title is rather important because with the title, you need to feel that it's clearly describing the article and including the most important keywords. You need to consider how you search for your research articles 
and you need to show that if it demonstrates the significance of your research and it makes sense, it's logical or not. A very well structured abstract is very important too. You need to have all the mandatory fields that it's completed. And you have to make sure that is it's done before you even submit your paper. And does the abstract accurately reflect the content of the article that you are reviewing or not? The introduction is rather important, even though that most of the introductions are targeting the audiences or the readers to convince them with the value of the paper and to convince them on what they expect when they will read this manuscript. So does it describe what the author hoped to achieve? Does this introduction is clearly articulating the research question? Has the author provided a summary of the current research literature to provide context or not? Is it clear how this is being challenged or built upon or not? Are there any important works that have been omitted or not? Also, the methodology is very important. When you are checking the paper, the methodology that the author used is very important. You need to make sure that the author accurately explained, explained how the data was collected, why he chose this specific methodology. Is the design that he used is suitable for answering the question, uh, the research question that he posed? Does the article itself outlines the procedures uh, that's followed or the practical application for the results that's emerged by the end of the research. Uh, maybe if this researcher is using new methods in his, uh, in his research, are they explained in details? Is there is sufficient information and these information are, are actually available for you as a reviewer and for the reader too, so you can replicate the research once more. Was the sampling appropriate? Have the equipment and the materials have been adequately described? What are they, the quantities, the measurements, everything? Does the article makes it clear what type of data was recorded? Has the author been precise in their describing the measurements or not? For the statistics is also important. These should be checked carefully because all the errors are mostly common in the statistics. The results, it's the fun part of the research that you are reviewing because it's giving you and stating the results, the actual results of the research. It's where the author should explain their findings and you need to make sure that these results are presented clearly and you also need to consider the merits and the appropriateness uh, of the author analysis. The conclusion is very important discussion too. When you are in the discussion, you need to make sure that the claims in this section is reasonable and supported by the results. Also, are the findings consistent with the author's expectations or not? You need also to make sure that all the conclusions are actually tied together by all the other elements. And does the article support or contradict previous theories? And does the author explain how the research has been added to the body of knowledge or not? All the graphics and tables where are very important, so you need to check where these are included. Please check the contents and if possible, make suggestions for improvements. Do figures and tables inform the readers? Are they an important part of the story? Do the figures describe the data accurately? Are they presented consistently or not? So in the same format, I mean. 
the language is very important. Thus, the very poor use of English makes it difficult to follow the author's argument? Of course. So in this case, if it's not up to you to edit the text, mention the problem in your review, report it, and the editor may decide to refer the author to an editing services uh, like Editage or a company that we partner with. The part of the implications for further research are very ethical and very important. Does the paper can, are bridging the gap between the theory and the practice? And how can the research be applied? So in practice, what's the economic and the commercial impact? And what is the impact of this uh, uh, in teaching? How to influence the public policy, if it can influence the public policy? And in research, does it contribute to the body of knowledge? There is something new in addition to the body of knowledge in a certain field? And for society, is it influencing the public attitudes or affecting the quality of life of humans? Are these implications consistent with the findings and the conclusions of the papers? Two, so, what about the quality of communication? Does the paper clearly expresses its case? And it, does it, is it measured against the technical language of the field and the expected knowledge of the journal's readership? Has the attention been paid to the clarity of expression and the readability of the paper? Is it, is there is a logical progression of the argument in the paper, so you, it makes sense how the problem has happened, why they use the methodology, why they pick these certain methodologies, and so on. The sentence structure itself, is it well structured? The jargons that they use, is it explained? Any acronyms and, and, and so on, is it well explained? All this that you need to check for. So after checking all these in a paper, you need to give your overall recommendations. So you will make an overall recommendation to the editor or the publisher to complete your review. And they will take this into account when they make their decision. The most common recommendation criteria are accept, minor revisions, major revisions, rejects or revisions. So just wanted to ask you, who published before in the audiences today? If you published before, please uh, send us on the chat part. So, as a reviewer, you will be making an overall recommendation to the editor or the publisher to complete your review. And they will take this into consideration and into account when they are making their decision. So, the most common recommendations criteria are either to accept, and you will inform here the editor that this paper is accepted and it matches the required criteria. Or there will be minor revisions, and then this will vary from one journal to another. However, all these minor revisions are often, re they require the author to make relatively small adjustments to the paper, which don't take much time, and they might be related to the author guideline requirements. So a slight reduction in the word count, the matting changes such as the labeling of tables or figures, or any further evidences of an understanding of the research literature in the field, or any slight elaboration on the research findings, that's called a minor revision. What about major revisions? The major revisions are often requires an, the author to make more significant improvements.
such as the type which take weeks or even months rather than days. So the authors may be asked to uh, address flaws in the methodology, for example, collect more data, conduct a more through analysis, or even adjust the research question to ensure that the paper is contributing something truly original to the body of work uh, or knowledge. The second one is to reject. You need to give a comprehensive explanation on the rejection reasons to help the author to enhance the quality of their work. Revisions are rather important because a request for authors to revise certain parts of their work and then submit it It's uh, submitted it once again. So, Dr. Anwil Harzing, a professor of international management in Middlesex University in London, uh, he, he said that uh, she said that the quality peer review is constructive, non-confrontational, and prompted. It means that you'll be putting yourself in the position of the author and helping them to bring out the best in their papers. So I need to know there is different models of the peer review. What are the different peer review models? What are the different peer review models? Do you know? Do you know what are the different peer review models? I'm waiting for the answers. Single anonymized, double anonymized, and open peer review. Yes. Thank you, Malak. Dr. Malak, thank you so much. So let's see. So we have different types of peer review models. The first one is the single blinded peer review process. And in the single blinded peer review process, the names of the reviewers are hidden from the author. However, the name of the author is shared with reviewers. The fact that the reviewers remain anonymous means they can speak honestly and impartially. Meanwhile, the knowledge of an author's identity can help reviewers place an article in the context of the author's earlier work. The second model is the double-blinded peer review process. The reviewers aren't told the name of the author and the author never learns the name of the reviewers. This is another model. Outside of the triple-blind model that we're going to discuss in the coming point, this is the surest way to ensure the process is completely objective. And here, in this type, the focus remains on the content of the article and the possibility of the reviewer is bias is eliminated. So the reviewer bias may be favorable or unfavorable conscious or unconscious the third part 
type is the triple blinded peer review process. And in this type, the identities of the author, the reviewers, the editors, they all remain hidden from each other. And the author here is usually identified only by the number. And the communication takes place through a website or a submission system. This eliminates any potential bias. So the peer review process, uh, the fourth uh, type is the open peer review. In the open peer review, it can vary in form. So it may be as simple as making the author and the reviewers known to one another, or the reviews and the reviewers' names. Maybe even published alongside the article. The review process here may take place pre or post publication and the reports may receive their own DOIs too, making them discoverable and even citable. This will offer complete transparency and some believe that the knowledge that the reports are going to be published encourages reviewers to produce higher quality reports Uh, high quality reports uh, and encourages reviewers also that the post publication format will be publicly recognized the important work of the reviewer which will help them to you know stay always motivated also our approach to article peer review is the majority of our journals have adopted a double blinded peer review model so with the reviewers invited by the journal editors the emerald open research operates at an open and post publication peer review process so the authors here choose an invite uh, and invite their own reviewers and the Peer review reports are published, uh, forming an integral part of the article. So Emerald Open Research is part of our flagship open access program, which is designed to give authors more choice, flexibility, and transparency. As a part of the goal, some Emerald journals have always been experimenting with an article transfer or cascading services, if the editor decides to decline or decides to decline the manuscript either before or after the peer review they may offer to transfer it to a, a more relevant emerald journal in the same field so if the author accepts that offer any reviews that have already taken place are transferred to the new journal along with the manuscript so this is the model that you'll submit and then there's pre-publication checks and then it will go to the publication process then there is the open review and the users are commenting so i hope i did not take much of your time i would like to share our website and emerald group publishing Well, you will find, if you want to publish with us, our content, our services, and we here, here have all what you need to know about becoming a reviewer. Please, if you have any questions, you can write it in the chat box. If you have any questions, you can write it in the chat box.
you have any questions, you can write it in the chat box. So I guess no questions. Thank you so much for attending today. And I'd love to see you in our coming sessions. We still have sessions till uh, mid-December before we go on our New Year vacation. I'd love to see you in our coming sessions. Thank you so much. Session was recorded and you'll receive a link to the recording via email tomorrow uh, within 24 hours along with a complimentary certificate of attendance to just say thank you for attending our session. I hope that you have benefited from today's session and um, and thank you so much.